I now call the May 27th, 2021 Board of Commissioners work session to order. We'll start with our finance director, Alicia Searcy, to present our financial update for the month ending April 2021. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So um, we ended April, had another good month in the county. Um, we're starting to get down to the end of our budget season. We've got two months to go um, as we move through this fiscal year. And at the end of April, we had collected 99.5% of our property tax. Our um, TVAT, we had collected 120% of that. Um, our sales tax, we were at 106%. Our total taxes, we're at 105%. Um, and at the end of April, we were 1,300,781 over uh, revenue over what we had budgeted. Um, so we've collected 102% of our budget. That's about an 8.9% increase over 2020. And for, as far as our expenses go, um, we were at about 81.3% and we're 83% through the year. So our expenses are running behind budget slightly. Uh, we do have some year-end expenses that will be coming up and we do have, um, I've had several calls from department heads wanting to know how much money they had left. So I think they're planning to spend it. So I think we'll come in, our expenses will come in right at where we've budgeted. Um, our fund balance year over year has increased 8.5 million and our cash year over year is up 8.8 .8 million. Um, that's general fund cash. Our bonds um, closed for the splice on May the 18th. So we got that finished and uh, got all that done. So we've got that money in the, in the bank as of May. So in summary, that's, that's where we are. If you have any specific questions, I'll be glad to try to answer those. Ms. Cersei, you and I met uh, a little while ago before when we went through this line item by line item. Everything looks very good. The couple of questions I did have, I think, was just basically a timing of a billing uh, for some things change from year to year. Maybe when we pay certain line items reflecting prior year to date, but everything looks good. And uh, definitely, as you're talking about that um, actual revenue coming in over projections, looks good with two months to go. So thank you and the department heads for your hard work and the chairman as well. Okay, not uh, hearing or seeing any other questions, we'll move straight into the discussion items for our meeting on Tuesday. So before we get started, what I'd like to do is I've done the past and what we did last month because we have lots of things again on this um, agenda. Um, I would like to put some of these items on a consent agenda. So after each one, I will ask, and if you're all in agreement, we'll we'll move those on for Tuesday night. So we'll start again with um, Alicia Searcy, our finance director. She's going to present two items. Um, one, well, actually one 9.1, the FY 2021 budget amendment notice of advertisement. Um, there is no vote on this. It's kind of the same as we did when the, um, I presented y'all the budget. Um, I will be giving you the, the budget amendment. We will uh, advertise it next month, uh, excuse me, next Wednesday, if I'm correct. We sent it to the, the paper on Wednesday to be advertised. It has to run for so many days. We will have a special call meeting to come back and vote on this budget amendment items that we discussed at the work session. So I, I feel like I might be confusing y'all, I don't mean to. Um, so we will not vote on that Tuesday night. I'm just giving you notice that we will advertise it, but we will vote on this budget. So I think I'm gonna turn it over to you right this moment. Okay. Um, we did get a proposed budget amendment put together. Um, it, 
I think you have a copy of it. It has the, the gray line and the blue line at the top. It says Carroll County proposed budget amendment FY 2021. I, I went back and I, I updated the, the revenue number a little bit um, just because we saw May come in a little better than what we thought. So at first we were talking about four and a half million. Um, we've increased that to 4.65 million. And then we take out the things that we've already uh, approved and discussed. Um, on 4 1, we approved um, some money for the animal shelter risk management, the Board of Commissioners Office, and probate of 191,433. And then on May the 4th, we approved um, some money for jail, pathways roof, magistrate roof, and a paving machine of a million one forty three one thirty one. Now that leaves us with three million three fifteen four thirty six. And so the proposal is um, to do some renovations at pathways, some recreation renovations, uh, recreation furniture, uh, E911 priority dispatch software, uh, computers uh, in several different departments, including the tax assessor, solicitor, magistrate, probate, and the CI. Uh, body cameras for the CI and radios and tasers. Uh, some additional turnout gear that the fire department needs. They've got parts and pieces that need to be replaced. Um, we've got uh, laptops to go in the fire trucks for our new CAD system, um, a commercial dryer at the animal shelter, a land all trailer for public works, and the uh, splash expenses or expenses for splice that we would normally uh, pay out of splice back from the general fund. Um, we're just going to leave those in the general fund and increase our general fund budget. Uh, we've got uh, some road improvements at Barjay Road. Uh, we've got some money in here from the Sheriff's Department for rifle vests and other supplies. Um, we've got uh, some additions to the current budget for solid waste, state court, corner in three rivers um, and then we've got uh, some money in here for the airport that they've requested so that brings uh, the total of these capital items to two million four forty two four hundred forty two thousand and then um, previously we had discussed doing uh, something for the employees out of this money and uh, we are looking at doing the same thing that we did last year. Uh, we, I think we sent out three different proposals and this would be um, the one that matches uh, the one from last year. So I think that sheet's are uh, labeled original bonus amounts. And uh, so if we do that, uh, that would leave us about 110,000, 111,000 to go back in to fund balance. So that's, that's how we're proposing it. Uh, there's a breakout of where that additional revenue will come from, which line items that'll come from. And um, so if anybody has any questions about that, I'd be glad to. Can you, Alicia, refresh my memory? I don't have notes on the last two things listed. This, the line for 205,500 solid waste state court corner in Three Rivers, and then the airport. Okay, um, and I don't have the exact dollar amount broken out for solid waste is the additional tipping fees where we just got more trash. That's the majority of it. I think that's about $180,000 of the 205. And then in state court, we had, um, we, we got a new judge elected. So in uh, January, we paid the old judge uh, a paycheck and a and a payment to the new judge, so that caused us to be over a little bit, and then we increased that the the admin person um, for the the judge is making a little bit more than the last person, so that'll cover that. Uh, the coroner changed uh, his health insurance from single to family, and so he's a one-person department 
in, usually in a department that kind of washes itself out. Like in the fire department, if you had a couple people that changed from employee only to family and vice versa, kind of washes it out. When you got a one person department, it all hits. Mm -hmm. So we've got an additional health insurance expense there. And then Three Rivers, uh, that was that's based on population, and um, the amount I budgeted was 2,000 under what our actual, what they projected our population to be. So we had to pay them in it 2,000 over what what I had budgeted. Mm, so that's formula driven. Correct. Right. Okay. And then the the airport is. Um, the chairman may be able to speak speak better about that. Um, I think my mind just went completely blank. Well, they they requested money for. Um, we, I, I know. I, I, mean, I hate to say it, but my mind just went completely blank. I've got my I, notes downstairs. I, I, I think there were some adjustments of some monies that was fronted at the time to build and do some things that didn't come in, and. I think there's oh, it was. It was, it was the hangers. It was the, the hangers. hangers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Your coffee's not helping. My coffee didn't help. It was. It was the hangers that they needed an adjustment from years ago. That's All it. Right. Thank you. So that's the hangers. That was that's it. it. And the airport brings in a lot of they do income. You just don't realize it really does. Fuel and hangers mm -hmm. and those planes sitting out there. We collect tax on. Mm -hmm. so. Those people fly here from other airports to oh, buy yeah. our fuel. Yes. Well, and, and we're obligated to support that. I mean, they're an oh, yeah. authority of Carroll County, I so. Totally support. Yeah, we're, thank you, we're thank obligated. Thank you for reminding us what it was. Sure. <laughs> so, anyway, this right here will be what I will propose as a budget amendment. It will run in the Times Georgia one day next week. Then we will have a special call meeting later in the month to actually vote on this. Mm -hmm. So, this is the second time you're hearing about it, so it'll be a third. <laughs> okay, and, and just for clarification, the ad that will run in the paper will include the two items at the top, too, the 191000 and the 1143. Yes. So the total amount of the amendment will be the total of all three of those items. So once again, we're very lucky that we have the funds to take care of these things. So the mm -hmm. good thing is... Um, Alicia projected our uh, revenue low, and the good thing is that despite the pandemic, our public has been very supportive. So we're able to take care of all these items that are necessi necessary necessities that if we didn't have it, we would not even be discussing this right this mm -hmm. moment. So that, that's, a good, that's the good news. And another thing to think about is several years ago, if you were online and you ordered something from Massachusetts, you didn't pay sales tax. That's correct. And that's been changed at the state. So when everyone was crammed indoors and they still were ordering things, we were receiving the, the tax benefit of that. So that's, to me, a big um, portion of how we were able to stay on track and get ahead as well. Yeah, over four million of this is related to TVAT and sales tax. So those are all consumer spending, and uh, so a lot of people in Carroll County buying new cars and spending money. I would like to, uh, and, and and yeah, it's it's fabulous. Uh, I went out to the the lawnmower shop and ended up getting something that I didn't think I would get, but um, he was saying out there, plus, and so sales just seemed to be, in fact, he said, uh, you know, Xmark was uh, discounting some mowers at the beginning of the year. They thought it'd be a little slow, ended up they're selling thousands more. They're working three shifts in Nebraska, and uh, people are just buying, but I, I, I say all that to to also say when this federal stimulus money is all spent and when things settle down, it, it may be that we do need to, you know, keep a, a frugal eye as well. And I'm very proud of what we've done, and, and kudos to our department heads and so on for for keeping things low so that we could survive through that tumult of the COVID era, but I just, I think it'd be good to not expect this to continue for a year or two. Things might 
slow down a little bit because uh, federal funds are going to be running out and people may draw back a little bit even though the economy seems now to be you know perking up They'll just so. print more. yeah right <laughs> well that leads us to our next the actual budget that we're going to vote on in June and it is a very conservative budget once yeah. again so um, I'll turn it over to Alicia to do 9.2 and we will vote on this Tuesday night so this this budget includes the adjustments um, that were discussed at the last meeting which was only one thing uh, where we moved twenty thousand dollars from uh, the public defender budget up to the district attorney budget so that is reflected uh, in the information that you have received here um, we we are uh, projecting some increases um, in in the budgeted amounts um, most all of this is supported by what our year-to-date numbers are showing some of them are actually a little bit less um, we, we are showing a, um, an increase in property tax auto tax sales tax uh, insurance premium tax uh, building permits um, we we aren't showing as much of an increase in the budget as the actual will be this year uh, in that building may slow down some with supply issues and, uh, and and possibly people just not wanting to build as much but we still think that we will we can support the the budgeted number that we put out there um, we've got an increase in some grant money increase in commissions and fees and uh, increase in charges for services and increases in uh, our fine revenue and then we're showing decreases in our local energy excise tax that's just come in lower than we expected uh, this year so I moved that back to hopefully ad adjust for those changes that we needed and our financial institution tax has has come in behind where we thought it would um, I backed off on the, the uh, business license revenue. Um, it's kind of hard to forecast that one because we prolong the collection of that or some of the collection of that until July because of the pandemic. And then so we got part of 2020 numbers in 2021 and then we got all of 2021 in 2021. So we're showing our actual numbers are up but I think if we back out the 2020 numbers from July that that we could actually see a potential decrease a little bit there um, we've decreased our inter intergovernmental uh, revenue that is going back to be recorded through our SPLOST account as it was prior to last year I've, been, I've decreased the inmate housing uh, just because we're getting fewer prisoners from the state in um, we, we think that's probably going to continue for a while. Um, I've decreased our interest. Uh, as you know, with the bond rates that we got, interest is very low at this point. So uh, that's hurting us on the other side from our interest <coughs> revenue. And then our other revenue is, is, I'm projecting it to go down about 165,000. So our total um, revenue increase from year to year is uh, three and a half million dollars um, and that's going to be a total of the uh, total budget of 59,109 and um, we have a contingency amount of 175,000 in there and so our spending for our departments will be at 58,934,066 um, and that that's just a summary a, a high overview but I we've been through this in two meetings in very detailed fashion uh, but I'll be willing to look at any questions that anybody has because I want to make sure everybody understands and and knows what they're gonna vote on well seeing and hearing no questions I guess we're done now this one will not go on consent this one has to be voted on Tuesday night so there'll still be another opportunity for questions 
um, if you need to, to ask myself or Alicia. So at this time, um, item 9.3 is the um, FY 2022 Liability and Risk Management Insurance Proposal. I'm going to call on Newton um, Jennings from Marsha McLennan, known to us as J. Smith Lanier. It'll take us a while to, to drop that. But um, uh, Newton was here last week at our all day budget work session, but I invited him back to just make sure that we didn't have any further questions. Um, they are, as, as well as I, am making the recommendation to go with um, liability. Um, liberty. I was going to say, where it says liability here, it says it should say liberty. We had, you know, several, I think two options. Here's liberty. So if y'all have any questions from last Wednesday on the proposal that they are recommending to us, Newton is here now, and if not, and y'all are okay, we'll move it over to um, the consent agenda for Tuesday night. I'm fine with moving it to consent. And, and Liberty is the one with the lower deductibles. Correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Works well. Okay. Great. No other questions for Newton then. All right. So we will put this on a consent agenda. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Newton. Uh, 9.4 is the Ad Valorem Tax Collection Service. I'm now going to call on our Tax Commissioner Vicki Bearden and our County Attorney Stacy Blackman. And this item also could go on consent. This is the intergovernmental agreement that we've been doing since, I believe, 1994, and um, where we contract with the cities to collect their taxes. So the only difference in this year's and the previous year's is that we added the um, $1 fee that goes into my budget each year, and that's, that's the only difference. Does anybody have any questions for Vicki or Stacy? No, thank you for the work you do, and thank you for y'all working out to get that additional dollar. I think that'll go a long ways to helping you with all the additional work and so forth that goes into that. Thank you. Yeah, consent to put this on for Tuesday night, so. Okay, great. Thank you. We now have item 9.5, the 911 emergency medical dispatch software. Um, Clay, our 911 director, is in a... 911 class, um, uh, director's class. He was one of 20 chosen from the state to be able to attend this. So we are doing some um, new technology. So thank you, Matt, for that. So we are piping him in by, by visual. He will be able to see you also, rather than just having a phone call. So Clay, I am going to turn it over to you. Um, we also have Shane. Um, from the 911 user board. I'm not sure everybody else came with you. Okay, so we have both of them here to help us with this. So Clay, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. All right. um, afternoon, Chairman and Commissioners, and I'm sorry that we're having to do my very first meeting with you guys through the phone or through Zoom, but thank you, Chairman, for letting me do it this way. Um, and, and like she said, we won't touch on it a lot, but I mean, I'm, I'm humbled and blessed because I'm, and I found out chairman, once I got here, I'm actually one of 14. Oh. Um, it's the state's very first 911 directors Academy. And um, I'm here at the very first course. And so I didn't want to miss out on the invitation. Um, and I did, uh, Shane Bell, the director of West Georgia Ambulance is there with me just because this protocol directly affects fire and EMS. Um, well, it affects the citizens the most, but they're the ones who utilize it in hand with my communicators. So if I run into a, an, a question protocol wise, he, he'll be able to help me out on that end. Um, this came about back in March and, and I realized that was right after I got appointed to this position. Um, but if you aren't familiar with what an emergency medical protocol is, um, Carroll County is very blessed in itself because most 911 centers strive to be able to provide an emergency medical dispatch protocol and most centers do, but there are still some in the state that aren't capable of it. 
but once you start providing it, you don't want to stop providing it. Uh, I think the, the one of the biggest importances for Carroll County and, and with uh, most counties, but ours in particular is, is the fact that we're so rural um, and our ambulance service does the best that they can, but at times there's a delayed response to, and that's, that's in, in every county, but during that delayed response, our center needs to be able to, to, to provide the family members or the caller or whoever it is with the best pre-arrival instructions to, to raise the chances of saving that life. And the current protocol that we have, we've had for multiple years, um, and I noticed prior to coming down here for my basic communications officer certification that there was some just slight um, areas that needed a, an improvement it, that started recognizing that made me con concerned. So I started looking into it a little more and realizing that, you know, what we had has worked in the past, but it's, it's outdated and it's no longer meeting the standard of care. So I started looking um, at new protocols because I knew this was something that needed to be addressed immediately. Um, so I met with members from where I'm at currently at the Georgia Public Safety Training Center. I've met with members of the Georgia Emergency Communications Authority. I have talked to, I, I wouldn't be ashamed to say 35 plus 911 centers in Georgia alone, but probably 15 to 20 that are out of state and across the country. Um, 20 of those that neighbor us um, all use the two companies that I've got quotes from. Uh, the the deal with the, there only being two quotes because it's my understanding that we would typically like to have three but i have discovered that in some arenas there's not always as many vendors as you would hope um, this item is kind of unique and in the in this field the two vendors that i provided y'all with quotes from are the two vendors that provide reputable standard of care protocols um, there are difference, differences between the two, but not much. It's more of the follow-up um, training and the way the protocols are laid out. So I've met with the users board. I've met with the EMS board as well as I think y'all can probably see on the, on the letters that we provided, as well as our medical director um, who has overlooked the protocols and the information. And um, after meeting and, and discussing all the pros and cons, that's why we've decided to go with priority. And it is a little bit, it's a little bit more expensive than the other. And I'm open for those questions um, on, on why and the process. However, um, they're just, when you calculate everything for the needs of Carroll County 911, I believe that the one we're seeking is the one that's gonna best benefit us. And the, the good thing, and I, I wouldn't say good, but because of 911's um, staffing over, over this last year, I'm able to purchase this protocol out of my current budget, thanks to Alicia um, and helping me with that. And I, I'm afraid that I will not be able to do that um, in the coming years, because as you all know how 911 is funded, um, my uh, on top of getting this priority are in this protocol updated as a priority and I want it to be for the citizens and for the center, um, mainly because we have a new CAD that's coming, that's getting close to going live. Um, this is probably on, on top of just answering those 911 calls and providing the service we do, I would say this is probably the second most high liability area that we, that we provide. Um, so we need something that's reputable and, and that meets the standard of care today and that they make sure that they maintain that and update it yearly. Um, but I'm afraid that, you know, because it is so costly, that is, and thank, you know, thank the Lord at how we've been able to staff and we've got six people in training right now. And as of June 1st, I would probably have seven people in training. I would hope that 911 gets to the point where I'm not able to, to get these things um, in this manner because we're staffed. I mean, we need to be staffed, but we have the money right now, and I feel that it's the best time to take advantage of it um, since we're about to go live with the new CAD and get this process started. Um, if you have questions about how it works, um, anything like that, or the other things that we talked about, I'm, I'm open for them now. 
Mr. Patterson, you did a really good job there summarizing, but I guess to go back through this. So essentially what you're asking to do is for us to essentially take on a new software system, PDS, that's a nationally recognized firm that specializes in comprehensive medical protocols. And I guess the, the reason to, to go with this type of firm is because medical protocols change. I know CPR several years ago used to, you, you would give so many chest compressions and then I guess mouth to mouth, and now that's been updated. I guess at a national level where most of them want you to do just chest compressions. So the, the, the importance of this as you're touching on is because medical protocols do change and we need a firm that's not only providing the software but is keeping up with that I guess at a national pace. Um, I noticed in the packet that Dr. Mitchell who's on your oversight board, uh, also your EMS board as you mentioned, they're making a recommendation for this particular company. Um, it's also my understanding, I know we've had some previous conversations and I've done a little extra research as well, but the CAD system that you talked about that we approved several months ago, even though this particular company is a little more expensive on the front end, it's my understanding uh, that they've already got the interface to accept this PDS, PDS system without having to go back in and do additional programming, I guess that would cost us money on the CAD side, is that correct? Yes, so to touch on the first part first, um, that is correct on why we need it. I, I, I won't, and, and that's the main issue with what we currently have. I mean, we're providing a, good, a, a service now, but we, we need to get something that's constantly updated um, because it, of it being such a high liability area. And these companies, um, and especially the one that we're going with, I, I will say that I've talked to as I said before, a, a numerous amount of agencies across the country that respect this company and they have nothing but a great reputation. They provide us with the updated protocol. They provide us with the training that we need. They provide us with the updates to the software and they also back their product. As long as I do my job and I make sure that my staff is doing their job of staying trained and staying to the protocol, if the county was to encounter some sort of situation um, because of of my center providing pre-arrival instructions to a medical um, call, then they would come down and also back the county as well and back their software. And what we what we currently have doesn't t doesn't go to that extent. And um, because it's changing, like you said, so often, I feel that that's very important. And then, yes, um, the other company is reputable as well. Um, I, I'm not going to be. I'm going to be transparent and tell you that the the fact is though even though it's 20 roughly twenty thousand dollars more um, initially our current CAD system that you all know that the county um, bought and paid for and spent a, a vast amount of money on um, currently has the interface for priority built into it and I've gotten with them in, in case things did not go the route we wanted to go and ask them what the price would be for them to build an interface for the um, new um, software that they do not have. And I was quoted between 16 and $17,000. Um, and okay. the current, and, and one last thing on the, on the, the national part, um, you know, they, they provide us with the software as well to move forward after a four to six month training period to do quality assurance, which is one thing that I've preached on since I got this position is that when Felicia and her new training coordinator spot is, is rocking and rolling, um, once we get a little bit more staff, then she will be able to be doing monthly to buy monthly quality assurance on those calls. And that's going to also help the county out liability wise. Thank you. And my final uh, question, Ms. Searcy, uh, the finance department, I guess, has reviewed this and understands about the impact to the operational budget, this would be included for the annual maintenance fee moving forward for 9600, correct? That's correct. That's included in the budget that I just reviewed with you. Okay. So those fees are, are taken into consideration. Thank you. So if I understand you correctly, the difference between these two quotes uh, really is negated say if we went with the, the lower quote and had to update then or revise the uh, interface with the CAD system, we'd end up at the same amount. 
Well, yes, sir. And I mean, I won't, I won't lie. I mean, it would be a, a, a couple thousand cheaper. Right, but relatively. Um, relatively close. And um, I think, and it's just from the conversations that I've had and attending the demos, I think with the training that they provide and the, and then the reputation and the history that they have alone, uh, to me, will kind of make up for that. I'm definitely supportive of this measure. I think one thing that Mr. Patterson brought up a while ago is that essentially this was technically, he, he, he did have the availability of the initial cost in his budget on um, the current fiscal year for FY21. So technically, even though we're approving this, it was technically that holistic dollar amount was already sitting there. I think we want to continue to support our 911 operations and I appreciate the EMS board and also the users board for them meeting and working with Mr. Patterson. And um, I think this is a good um, protocol to move forward with. And I think it's something that would definitely benefit our citizens and those who travel through our community in the need of an emergency. Yeah, if I can just say one last thing, I think the, I mean, I understand completely um, with the purchase of the new CAD and what 911's been through. And it, and it is, 911 is a, is a costly operation. Um, but we, you know, we're working diligently, Matt is working diligently getting the CAD live um, and, and we're really taking steps. This is not something that we're just trying to implement because, you know, we want it. We're very close to, with all of these things and all these projects going once they're all going, 911 is going to be in a good, in a good place. And I'm very, uh, excited and anxious, also stressed, but um, we've we've got a good thing. We've got a good plan, and and I we've got a good plan moving forward. So I think this is going to definitely just assist us in getting in line with where we need to be. And and Stacy Blackman as well as Joel have worked diligently. I, I've seen the mass amount of emails that I've been copied and included on in the past two weeks on the getting the contracts the way that Carroll County needs them to be. And so I would, I, I would move to her about, you know, the questions on that and if they are ready. I know that today we were very close, but again, I've been in class, so. Um, but I do know that we got the payment um, worked out to where they would accept half payment upon execution of the contract or implementation agreement, and then half once they actually got everything ready and we went live with the software um, and this can even happen now I'm not never hope that this happens I hope the cat is live before this protocol but this can this is not something that will be held back because of the cat um, it, it's a it is its own separate thing and it will be interfaced with the cat but it can also operate standalone we just don't want to have to do that and that's why I'm, I will uh, I'll be glad when it when everything is live together if the board does decide to move forward, Madam Chairman, I know I've been able to look at the draft contract that has been uh, proposed thus far. Um, I've been able to uh, work with Ms. Blackman um, and Mr. Tysinger as well in sending some of my thoughts on that. So I would defer, I feel confident that they are going to address my concerns. There were just a few things that I had some questions about. So I would defer um, contingent upon that, that the obviously the chairman and the uh, attorneys would you know, it would be contingent upon your approval of the final language of the contract. And I think we, um, we, we have that in the agenda item that the chairman, along with the county attorney, are authorized to make the final um, revisions to the contract, and we're very close. The vendor's been very good to work with. Mm -hmm. If there's no other questions, are y'all good with this being on the consent agenda? Yeah. Steve? Yeah, I'm just, I got caught, I got caught a little bit by surprise at this. I guess I missed something. But, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you, Clay. Do good in class. Thank you. Don't misbehave. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> okay, next on our agenda is uh, 9.6. It's public works. I'm going to call Charles Pope to talk about the traveling sliding axle trailer. Thank you, Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Shane. <clears throat> uh, seven years ago, I turned in a five-year uh, replacement plan for equipment. 
Uh, and of course, last year, the, due to the COVID, we didn't try to get a trailer. But this is the last piece of equipment on the five-year plan that we tried to replace. <clears throat> this trailer is 30, 34 years old. Um, and what we're asking for is a 55-ton sliding axle trailer. The bid proposals went out uh, 5 4 21. Uh, seal bid pro proposals was to be turned in by 3 p.m. Thursday, May the 5th. We had three companies to bid on this uh, sliding axle trailer, uh, which was Trail Ease, TM Trailers, which was Landau, and then Trail King with Yancey Brothers, but Yancey Brothers did not meet the specs due to their paperwork wouldn't in order because they was the highest bidder anyway. So uh, <clears throat> looking at that, uh, we would recommend to uh, buy the Trail East trailer for $83,612. Um, that company has been in business for 58 years. Mm -hmm. So we feel like that would be a good piece of equipment. Any questions for Charles? Mr. Pope, I see that you are recommending to go with the lowest um, price here, and I'm certainly not complaining about that, but uh, yes. Landall is kind of like when you talk about a Cadillac, you may be talking about a Lincoln or something else, but you think of top of the line when you hear certain names. Um, you feel confident that this piece of equipment is something that will service you well, even though um, you know it's a little bit cheaper than a higher brand, I guess. Yes, sir, we think so. The last trailer we bought was a Landall brand. And this trail leaves uh, meets all the specs, same as Landau. Uh, the the axles, tires, everything is is comparable with the, with the Landau. So yes, sir, we feel like that this trailer will meet our needs. Okay. Well, thank you for being honest and recommending something that you think will serve you well, and it's also the cheapest on the list. So. Yes, sir. Any other questions for Charles? Okay, are we good to put this on a consent agenda? I'd like to have him present at the meeting. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I won't see the trailer. Yeah, yeah really. It's big enough to <clears throat> handle your new asphalt equipment, right? Y yes, sir. It is. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All right, so All we're right. green. It's on a consent. Yes. All right. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Uh, we now have 9.7, the transit contract renewal for FYU. Uh, Fiscal year 21-22, we're going to call on Stacy Blackman. And when I say transit, this is our Carroll Connection. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, Three Rivers has presented a proposed contract for the upcoming year and a nice summary memo about the changes that was very helpful. Um, they are outlined in one of the changes that now the third party operator will cover the auto insurance, which is nice. They added references that we they are complying with the Department of Human Services regulations in addition to Georgia DOT. They added language just so we are all, we're all aware that these um, uh, vehicles will need to be, be replaced, usually around five years or 150,000 miles, and we are obligated to do the local match, which I think is only 10%, it's a low amount and the service areas and the fares have not changed. So those are the changes to the proposed contract. And it's still the same price it has been. Yes, the fare, oh, excuse me, yes, the price is 35,000, yes. and that is the price we've had. Last year they did forego the annual fee because of the CARES Act money that they had available. And just for clarification, our budget has changed because of some accounting measures. I think they wanted to run some fuel and oil and maintenance and some stuff through there. So the numbers may be on the actual budget that you see, the reports is a higher amount than the 35,000, but my point is in the reimbursables, it comes back down to that same amount. Is that correct, Ms. Thurston? Great, thank you. Any further questions for Stacy? We all agree to do this on a consent. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. All right, we're now going to move into the business session. Um, 10.1, most of these are appointments. Um, so for 10.1, we have um, uh, Catherine Huckabee and Jennifer Shelt Ruiz have been um, sent to me as nominations for the Board of Elections. Um, if y'all are good with that, we'll put this on the consent. Any? Okay. 
Um, the next one is 10.2. It's the Carroll County Board of Family and Children's Services. Um, Latasha Vaughn has been serving for um, several years and at the request of the board chair, Emily Cole, she would like us to reappoint Ms. Vaughn. Are y'all good with that? Okay, so I'm gonna do consents. Uh, 10.3 is an appointment to the Carroll County Library Board. Um, both Phyllis Snipes and Mike Ferson have agreed to be reappointed. Um, is there a consensus to continue with both these nominations? Yes. Okay. Uh, 10.4 appointments to the Development Authority. I believe we still have a few who are um, confirming things, so I'll wait till Tuesday night on this one. 10.5 is an appointment to the Joint Development Authority of Carroll County, Coweta, Douglas, Harrells, Hurd, Pauling, Polk, and Troop. And uh, Tim Warren has been representing us um, on this committee. So if y'all are agreed, we will do a consent to reappoint Mr. Warren. All right, 10.6 is an appointment to the Pathway Center Community Service Board. Um, Jody Goodman, oh, excuse me, um, excuse me, my, Major Jordan, I'm sorry, I was skipping ahead. Um, so Major Jordan is um, our appointee. Is that fine with y'all to put on consent? Okay. All right, Region 6, the Behavioral Health and Development Disabilities Planning Board. Um, we actually have two positions um, right at this moment. I only have a nomination for one. It's Jody Goodman. She has been serving. Um, so I would like for us to put a consent to reappoint Ms. Goodman to this board. Is that good for the consent? Now, I will tell you, we still have a second vacancy. We can discuss this for the August meeting. Um, this one, they do have to travel to Union County. Um, so it is going to be somewhat difficult to find people that have that time. It's every other month. Um, I believe I sent that to you on the email, some information. So um, if we could, you know, have some more conversation with our constituents for that appointee. So we'll bring that back up at the August meeting. Uh, 10.8 is appointments to the West Georgia Emergency Medical Service Council. Um, Tim Paget had requested um, or made the nomination of uh, Gary Thomas and Nick Turner. Is that good with y'all? Good mm -hmm. for a consent. Okay, thank you. Uh, and 10.9 is um, because we're excited to be welcoming Donna next Tuesday officially. Um, she will have to uh, leave the Plan Zoning Board. So for my at large, um, I would like to appoint Danielle Tackett. And um, I'd sent them the email, her, her bio and stuff. So if y'all are good with that, a consent? Okay, great, thank you. So um, let me just go back over the agenda for Tuesday night. Of course, we'll have our call to order, roll call, invocation, pledge of allegiance, approval of agenda, approval of the minutes, public comments, we'll have zoning. And then we will have a vote on the budget for next year. And we will have a vote on the development authority appointees. That's the two votes. <clears throat> then we'll have 9.3, 9.4, 9.5, 9.6, 9 9.7, 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, 10.5, 10.6, and 10.7, 10.8, and 10.9 will all be on a consent agenda, which will be one vote. <coughs> Any corrections or? I don't feel like we have enough on the consent agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, well, hearing and uh, seeing no other questions, I will go ahead and adjourn the work session. Thank you all.